Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the SSIS Integration Toolkit for Magento. The Magento Toolkit is a high-performance data integration solution that works for Magento Shopping Cart or e-commerce system, utilizing Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services capabilities. In today's demo, we will show you our software running in a SQL Server 2012 environment. If you are using a different SQL Server version, the interface might be slightly different. To get started, let's create a simple SSIS project. This tutorial assumes that you already have the SSIS bits installed, otherwise you will not see the SSIS project type here. In the Business Intelligence template, select the Integration Services project and give your project a name. Press OK to create the solution. SSIS is a platform that can be used to implement data migration and integration using its drag and drop capabilities. To begin the SSIS implementation using our toolkit, we will create a connection to the Magento server. To do so, right click on the Connection Manager area and select New Connection. Then we will choose Magento from the list and select Add. The Service URL field lets you specify the URL to the base URL for Magento REST endpoints. The Store Code option specifies the store code that will be used to retrieve the Magento schema. If there is no store code, the Blank Code option can be selected. We currently support token authentication. If you already have an authentication token you'd like to use, you can enter it here. If you need to see or copy the token, you can click on Show Token to reveal the text. If it is an admin token, check the Admin Token box. There is also the option to generate token. Once the dialog window appears, enter your credentials. You can specify what type of token to generate, depending on the user you are accessing Magento with. The generated token will automatically populate the Authentication Token field. It will also select the Admin Token checkbox if applicable. The Timeout option lets you specify the maximum number of seconds that the Connection Manager will wait while trying to connect with Magento. This option is defaulted to 120 seconds. In the Advanced Settings tab, we also have Proxy Server Connection Settings, which you can enter if you are behind a proxy server. There is also an option for Retry on Intermittent Errors. This option is intended to help recover from possible intermittent outages or disruption of service, so that the integration does not have to be stopped due to temporary networking issues. We have designed this option so it should only retry when it's deemed to be safe to do so, but there may be exceptions. Before we hit OK, we should test the connection to make sure our information is correct and we can connect successfully. Please note that the connection manager that we just created is a package level connection manager. For SSIS 2012 or later, you can create project level connection managers if you right click the connection managers node within the solution explorer. After creating the Magento connection manager, you would start to create data flow tasks to facilitate data integration. Within your data flow task, we offer two data flow components that would help you to implement integration solutions for Magento. The first component we're discussing is the Magento source component, which is what you may use to read data from Magento. Later on in this demo, we will show you the destination component, which is what you may use to write data into Magento. In order to use these two components, you would want to make sure that they are available in the SSIS toolbox. If you're using SQL Server Integration Services 2012 or later, those two components should automatically show up there. If this is not the case, you can click the SSIS Toolbox button. Note that if you are using SSIS 2008 R2 or earlier, you would need to manually add these components to the SSIS Data Flow Toolbox. To use the Magento Source component, we can simply drag this component to the design surface of the Data Flow task. Double click to configure the component. Let's select a Magento Connection Manager. The endpoint drop down lists all available REST endpoints. Based on the endpoint selected, the description box below 
will automatically populate to provide more details. When the source object specified has one or more readable child objects, the child objects option is enabled. Let's choose a child object here. Later in the columns page, there will be a secondary output for each child object selected. There are some source objects that have general parameters. These are parameters that are not related to searching or sorting. You will see a list of available parameters and can set a value which will be used for the service call. We will change the endpoint to products to demonstrate the search and sorting parameters. Some source objects can support batch size. A default of 50 records per web service result is used, but you can set this to any number that your Magento server allows. Note that some source objects have search parameters. These are parameters that allow results to be filtered. When using more than one search parameter, Magento supports two levels of AND OR operators. As you enter search parameters, each consecutive parameter with an OR operator will be part of a group where one of the parameters has to be true. When an AND operator is used, a new group will be created. Each parameter group separated by an AND operator must be true for a result to be returned. For example, products will be returned with names similar to Lucia. Some source objects also have sorting parameters, which allow results to be sorted by field. Enter sorting parameters by specifying a field and a sorting direction. Results will be sorted by the top parameter first, then by subsequent sort parameters. Notice that we have a refresh component button to refresh the component to the latest Magento metadata. This retrieves and updates the latest metadata in each applicable field. We can now navigate to the columns page to configure what fields we are reading from Magento. This will show you all available attributes from the object specified from the general page. Here you will notice that by default, all the Magento fields are selected. This may not be the best practice. You should only select the fields that you need to use in the downstream pipeline components. As mentioned before, if any child objects were selected, the drop-down menu on the top of this page will have a secondary output column. Click OK to finish configuring the source component. For this demonstration, we are going to add dummy data readers for the purpose of showing you how the data flows from the source to destination components with the two outputs specified. This is really just for demonstration purposes. In your case, it is very likely that you will be using a destination component that writes to a database table, flat file, or an application system such as Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, and so on. We will now execute this data flow task. Next, we will create a new data flow task that demonstrates the destination component. As mentioned before, the Magento destination component is used to write data to Magento. For my source data, I will use the data spawner component to quickly generate some sample data to work with. The data spawner component is a part of the SSIS productivity pack, which is a collection of premium SSIS components to enable greater developer productivity. Now let's drag the Magento destination component and connect to the upstream data flow component. Double click to open its editor form. On the general page, we must first select a Magento connection manager. The endpoint field displays a list of available endpoints that allow write actions. We will choose customers in today's demo. We currently offer three write actions, post, put, and delete. The post option will create new objects. The put option will create, update, or upsert Magento objects depending on the service endpoint. Lastly, the delete option will delete objects. Today, we will select post as our write action. 
Similar to the source component, the destination component also has a refresh component button to refresh the component to the latest Magento metadata. This retrieves and updates the latest metadata in each applicable field. Now we can navigate to the columns page, where we can map the columns from the upstream components to the Magento destination fields. The last page is the error handling page, where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is to fail on error, where the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output, where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns, called error code, error column, and error message. The ignore error option is generally not recommended as the component will stay silent for any errors that happen. There is also the Enable Columns for Default Output section, which you can use to enable or disable the additional column in the Destination Component's default output. The Magento Record ID gives you the newly created Magento Records ID field value. Press OK to finish configuring this Destination Component. We can now execute this data flow task. This concludes a demonstration of our SSIS integration toolkit for Magento. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.